Hello, everybody, and welcome to Off the Rack. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. Activity. This is the comic book review show where we take a comic book from last week and then break it down by its basic elements of art and story and tell you what we thought about it. And today we are going to be talking about Batman number 27, written by Tom King, and with some art by multiple sources, according or to where. Whatever. Or whoever, according to the <laughs> writing in the book. It's penciled by Clay Mann. But if you use Comixology or any other source, it's also by David Gianfilippe. So, yeah, he's the only one credited on DC site. So, yeah. yeah. So, like some art. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you are uh, thinking about picking it up and you want to know what happened in it, if you are neck deep in the War of Jokes and Riddles, or Wojar, as we affectionately refer to it here on this show. Uh, the War of Jokes and Riddles is in its third chapter, and so it's a good time to take a break from all that setup and action to talk about one character, and that one character is apparently everyone's favorite DC villain, Kite Man. That's right, we got part one of the Ballad <laughs> of Kite Man. It always makes me think of South Park. Yeah. 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 Kite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Hell yeah. Which is fact. really them just ripping off DC's really lame villain, Kite yes. Man. So, there you have so it. They are the ones who are the tools. Look shape. forward to DC's version of Mintberry Crunch. <laughs> Coming soon, <laughs> written by Tom King. So, the writing was actually, in my opinion, um, pretty good. I enjoyed the story. This was the first uh, Wojar story that I have enjoyed. Probably because it jumped around a lot, it told a lot of things in a short amount of time, and I thought they were very impactful, especially for, you know, who Kite Man is. I think it could have been a little better. I'm still not super on board with Wojar. Like, I'm, I'm still, like, holding the emergency brake a little bit, being like, I'm not sure I want to let go! But this was a better jumping on point for me, so I thought it was cool. Shockingly, I also enjoyed this issue. I just thought it was well written, despite the fact that I don't think that now is the time for us to start getting into Kite Man's origins. The biggest things come from small beginnings and the meagerest of characters. You know, Frodo carried the ring after all, so who knows? Did you just did you compare just Kite Man to Frodo? Frodo yeah, that's what I did. For me, it just reminded me of the episode of Batman the Animated Series, um, Joker's Favor, where we meet uh, Charlie um, Collins. Collins who is very similar to Charles Charlie Brown. Brown. Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean, look, it, like, they are different and they're not, like... Uh, yeah, 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 it's, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Maybe it's, it's fine. an homage. Right, it's fine. It doesn't really matter, because it, it is different. Like, in, in that episode, like, there is no, like, child, there's no death. There's no. Like that. It's fine. It's just, I, they, immediately I was there. I was like, oh yeah. That's a great episode. Right. That is a good episode. I feel like this person was really suited uh, for this type of story because a lot of quiet moments, and that's where they really shine for me. There is that really spectacular two-page splash, but, like, it's fine. I like it. It's cool, it. but it's fine. For me, I think they shine when we see pages like uh, Charles or Charlie talking to his son, and, like, the way they broke that up, and, like, certain things pop out, and certain things, even though they're two panels, are really one panel. And then also even scenes where, um, like, the scene where Joker and he are sitting quietly on the couch... It's just really well handled. Like, everything is really competently rendered. Um, the coloring works for me. Like, a lot of it's very bright, which offsets the darker parts later on, especially when things are in shadow, like Batman or when they're in the hospital or the Joker, in fact. I like that they honored the uh, design for the Riddler. Uh, mutton chops were gone, but, like, facial feature-wise, like, it pretty much matched up. People don't always do that. People are like, eh, no, I'm just going to do my own thing. But yeah. they, they went with it. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a fair comparison to Mikhail Yannon's art, which I thought was phenomenal. This really, for a minute, I thought it was mm. Yannon. So that's a testament to their ability to uh, kind of can maintain consistency while still doing something of their own. Cool. Was it a weird question mark tattoo on his chest? It's or was a it a scar? It's a scar. Does it end it's in his belly button? Tattoo. <laughs> yeah, well, the yeah, belly button's the dot. <laughs> yeah, where he gets shot. So he gets shot and then the doctor did the best that he could. Yeah. And like, so like he's going to have a horrific scar. So he decides... You know what? I'm gonna. It's not a period. It's a question. Yeah, I'll turn it into. This a isn't where my my story ends. Just no. shoot me two more times, and it'll be an ellipses. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not the ellipses. He's not one, the continuation. He's put the one on top of it, and then it's a colon. Right. Or a semicolon. And he can make it out of his colon. <laughs> Do you recommend Batman Twenty Seven: The War Jokes and Riddles Part Three, The Battle of, or The Ballad of Kite Man Part One? You guys recommend it? I, I recommend it. I think it was actually a really good read, despite the fact that I don't really see a world where this should exist. 
I don't like. I have no reason to not recommend it. I definitely recommend this one. <laughs> I thought it was great. So let's get into recommendations for books that are coming out this week on Wednesday that we think you should pick up. It's comics. This week I only have one recommendation, and it's from DC, and it's Doom Patrol number seven. And I can properly recommend this because I've already read it. Ooh, I'm from the future, and I read it. It's really awesome. It starts off a little weird and off-putting, but that's on purpose because by the end you're like, oh, I see what you did, Gerard Way, with your cleverness. Yeah, excited it's back. This week I'm recommending Infamous Iron Man number 10, written by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Alex Maleev. This continues the saga of Doctor Doom as Iron Man, now working with Riri Williams to deal with Tony Stark from the future, who's Sorcerer Supreme apparently. I love this series, and I think that it is a fine handoff from Hickman's Doctor Doom to Bendis' version of Doctor Doom. I never really liked Bendis' Doctor Doom, especially if you read Mighty Avengers when he was on it. But now, I'm really digging it. Maliv is a titan on art. It's just a fantastic series. And we're going to find out more about Doctor Doom's mom. And uh, the solicitations actually give you a little spoiler, so I will not. But go check it out, because I think it's one of the top Marvel books being published right now. So my recommendation this week is going to be Punisher number 14, from Marvel, of course, written by uh, Becky Cloonan with art by Matt Horak. It seems to be a book that's going to be uh, dealing with a blackout. Uh, obviously, because that's what's in the description. Anybody can find that out. I found it out. But what we're not going to find out... That uh, doesn't make any sense. I'm going to start over. <laughs> now, they say this is not going to be any ordinary blackout. So something caused this. Maybe a character caused this. But the cool thing about it is that I think the art is going to be really cool for this issue. Drawing characters that are in a blackout, you're going to have a lot of silhouettes. You're going to have a lot of things that are implied. And hopefully, we're going to see some really cool stuff. I really like the idea of what the Punisher is going to be doing like Frank Castle in New York City just like watching everyone like I can't be seen at all oh I'm gonna kill everybody except he's not gonna kill everybody he's gonna kill you know he's gotta kill somebody right I mean it's the Punisher right and there you have it everybody those are all the books that are fit to print as far as we're concerned that you can pick up this week on Wednesday of course we'll see you guys next week with an all new episode of Off the Rack and by the way if you're a long time fan you've been watching this show for a while and you're a viewer of this program and you've noticed the set's a little different for example we're a little off balance today we're, we're missing one of the shelves uh, oh we are? yeah oh yeah. the reason for that is implicit it's not just because I moved things someone my stole house. it yes and, and you have to figure out who it is so call one and no okay. I figured out who it is it's the creature sitting on Tiffany's knees yeah, this a Tuscan Raider yeah very no they <laughs> Yeah, and if they we, did... We were meant to think it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is, they, they left tracks and they were side by side. Some wow. people always ride single file to hide their numbers. <laughs> Hello there. Anyway, stay tuned for big exciting changes happening on this program and on every program here on this channel, Comic Pop. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks all for watching and uh, may the fools be with you. I don't know. He's got little eyes and he can't possibly see me. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to yeah. do you're the... Wow, what? <laughs> it was like, if a if a Wookiee and a Tusken Raider were to have mated and had a child before it died, that's the sound. <laughs> that's the sound of, shortly after being born. And then being mercy killed by, <laughs> the, oh. by the Tusken midwives. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>